Siddharth has asked that does astrology work? It's an interesting question because it's not just confined to astrology. There are myriad of such things, be it numerology, tarot card reading, palmistry and all the rest of it. The question is that whether any of these things work. First off, when we ask such questions that whether astrology works, we are merely looking for an answer in terms of a yes or a no. Deep down, we already have an established belief and we are just looking for some facts that will validate our belief. We don't ask such questions with a deep sense of inquiry. We just ask them so that we can gather new perspectives, new information that will further support our inherent belief. And the thing is that through logic and argument, you can prove or disprove anything. There are people who argue beautifully in favor of astrology. They have invested their whole life in it, so they are bound to defend it and they defend it beautifully. On the other hand, you will find people who have a sole interest in debunking these things. They also argue in a very lucid manner. So listening to the both sides, you are bound to get confused. And to avoid that confusion, our mind plays a trick. It already formulates an inclination towards one thing and from there on, it just listens selectively. Haven't you seen people that they only listen to things that align with their belief? And the more information that they acquire in support of their belief, the more rigid their belief becomes and lesser becomes the possibility of a genuine inquiry. So logic, arguments, information cannot reveal the truth of anything. To know the truth, you have to look at a problem without any conclusions or judgments. J. Krishnamurti used to say this thing, that in the very question lies the answer. So our inquiry should not begin with the question of whether these things work, but rather why do we ask such questions? What is our interest in such questions? A sincere inquiry is not at all interested in either supporting or debunking these things. A sincere inquiry means that you're going to find out that what is it that pulls you toward such questions? What is it that makes you question the validity of these things? If you are going to pay careful attention to all these things, be it astrology, numerology, you will find that all of them are deeply concerned with human beings' future. Since we have the capacity to think and imagine our future, we want to be certain of it. All our pujas, prayers, astrology, numerology, just stem from that fear of future. Our temples, our church, our mosques are so deeply rooted in fear because we are trembling within. We are frightened within. We are so insecure. And if someone comes along and offers us an assurance of a safe future, we fall for it. Irrespective of any scientific or rational basis. That's it. Remember, everything is just born out of an intrinsic need. Medicine is there so that people can live a life free of disease. If everyone is just going to become whole and healthy, then no one will take an interest in medicine. All the doctors, all the hospitals will just disappear from this world. In the same way, all these ancient sciences are just an offshoot of fear. If people are going to become fearless, if people are going to drop all the fear of future, then no one will take an interest in these ancient sciences. Everything will just disappear from this world. But as things are right now, everyone is frightened within. Everyone is trembling within. The rich, the poor, the educated, the uneducated, the rational, the irrational. This is a very great misconception that only irrational people fall for such things. No, it only takes a small moment that will convert you from being a very rational person to an irrational one. When life hits you hard, all your logic goes down the drain. I have seen people who were great rationalists becoming superstitious because they were going through some really tough times in their life. So drop this idea that only irrational people fall for such things. If you really want to avoid the trap of falling in such things, then there is only one way and that is to accept the insecure nature of life. Life's intrinsic nature is insecure. Life thrives in insecurity. A small flower opening itself to the skies to the wind, to the rain, to the thunderstorm is a form of delicate life that thrives in insecurity. It blossoms and it dances in the wind regardless of all the challenges. We can also live like that flower. We can also learn something from that flower. 
We can also dance and bloom in our life regardless of all the challenges and uncertainties. Life need not be secure, but instead of questioning and finding out that why are we so fearful deep within, we are too quick to believe in something. And we are such fools that just because a lot of people believe in something, we think it must be true. It is such a vast existence, trillions and trillions of galaxies moving around in such harmonious rhythm. There are more stars in this universe than there are sand grains on our earth. And we think that our fate will be changed by adding a few alphabets in our name. We think that the marriage compatibility between two people is going to be decided by the time and place of their birth. We think that the fate of the politician or the clerk or a musician will be decided by some movement of the stars. It is utterly stupid to think so. But we have given so much importance to the individual that the individual has become more important than this vast cosmos. So this self-importance needs to be dropped. And how are you going to drop it? By accepting this basic truth of life that life is insecure. The moment you accept this thing, you simply relax into this moment. Then you can dance like a flower into this moment, regardless of all the challenges, all the uncertainties. In the acceptance of insecurity, there is security. Such is the strange paradox of life, that the moment you accept the insecurity of life, for the very first time, you feel secure. And lastly, I want to say that life is an adventure because it is insecure. Here the unexpected happens. So never ask for expected, certain. Astrologers promise you the certain. They tell you that all your expectations will be fulfilled, but it only leaves you more and more anxious about your tomorrows. But if you are going to remain open for the future, if you are going to remain empty for the future, then you will find that unexpected things will happen in your life. And when the unexpected happens, it has a mystery in it. It has a thrill in it. Then you can rejoice in it. So I hope, Siddharth, that I have answered your question. I know that it wasn't a straight answer, but I think that it was a much needed inquiry.